With that little splat, I begin my portrait by following the value patterns that I see in the face. That is the only way to go. That is seeing and painting like a professional artist. So let's get into the weeds with this. How do you follow the value pattern? What the hell does that mean? Here's a sneak peek of this completed demonstration painting. You see the white of the paper that represents the highlights on his forehead, parts of his white hair, cheeks, prominent chin, and other places around his face. That's the very lightest value in his value pattern that's going across the face from light to middle values to dark values. So I make damn sure that those highlights are not covered by any paint. I save those areas as the white of the paper. Now, for instance, the side of his face, especially around the cheek area, that is a middle value pattern. So, I make sure that I don't go too dark or too light. I paint a middle value. How about the darkest values in the value pattern across his face? How about those eyes? How about some of the dark areas in the hair, the ear, the nose, especially where the nostril is, where the upper and lower lips meet, and his neck? Those I need to paint in the very darkest values. And what if I were to paint this gentleman in full expressive colors? You know what? I see the same value pattern that I see in his face, whether it's in black and white or if I were colorblind or could see in full color. Okie doke, I hope that makes sense, and now I'm going to continue the painting from start to finish, with maybe a few comments in between. We'll see. As you can see, this is his mouth area, underneath his nose, and I, I'm just looking at fairly dark shapes and painting those in. To really bring out the side of his face, I'm painting a fairly dark background. Most of the time, it's good to move around the painting. Don't get fixated on one spot, and that's what I am not doing. I'm not getting fixated. So now I'm working on the eye, his glasses, and a little bit of the background again. Now I'm going into the side of his face, the cheek area that I talked about. Putting in some mid-values, maybe some values that are a little bit darker, a little bit lighter. But basically I'm defining the side of his face. It looks easy, doesn't it? But believe me, many, many years of painting is behind this particular painting. Now I move and I start to define his chin and I go into his 
neck area. His ear is in shadow, so now I'm putting a slightly darker value to get that ear cast in a shadowy shape. And now I'm going up into his hair. Like I said before, I like to move around the entire face. I want to unify all the values. I don't want to become obsessed with just one little part. Here I'm splattering in a little bits of clear water in hopes of getting a little bit of texture. As that water dries, it makes these little textural, what we watercolor artists call blossoms. Just adds to the visual excitement of the painting. Or as I like to say, it makes my portrait artsy-fartsy. Now I move into the eye area and some of those dark values where you see the deepness of the eye and then mid of values around the eye that define the upper and lower eyelids and even help define the frame of the glasses. I have to work very deliberately and carefully. By the way, as I'm painting, you can see the corner of the reference photograph, and it is a photograph that I originally took of this gentleman that I'm working from. And as I paint, my eye goes back and forth. I want to see how the value patterns work, what the shapes look like, and compare it to what I'm painting. So I get an accurate impression. This is what all artists do, whether they're looking at a reference photograph as they're painting or whether they're painting in real life. It's this back and forth, back and forth comparison process. Look how the darker values on either side of the stem of his glasses really define that stem and I'm leaving that stem as the white of the paper as we artists as we watercolor artists like to say our mantra is say the very lightest values that you are seeing in your subject as the white of the watercolor paper the other eye and as an artist i don't care what you call it an eye a cow an airplane it doesn't matter what i'm doing is i'm carefully looking at the value shapes and carefully painting them and not with a tiny little brush i don't have to get every single detail that's not important i'm the type of artist that likes to capture the impression of something and not paint it in terms of photo realism. For me, it makes for a much more exciting watercolory portrait. Hey, notice this entire painting is painted with one medium size lousy brush. That's all you need. One medium size lousy brush. Well, maybe a good brush. You know what I mean.
Only one stroke of my brush, and I've got the nostril. I've got the nostril shape. Now I'm getting that cast shadow under the nose just a wee bit darker. Some darker strokes of paint below his hair to bring out the hair a little more visual contrast and it makes the painting a lot more dimensional. and some darker values in his neck area as well. And I'm purposely not getting into any detail as far as his shirt. There's a lot that you don't necessarily have to paint, and the viewer will look at your painting and fill in what you didn't paint. I know it sounds weird, but it happens all the time. Now I'm painting the darker shape in the subject's ears, you know, the ear canal, that entire pattern. And when I'm done, it brings out the ear. Looks like an ear. And without a lot of detail, like I said, the person looking at the painting will fill in the rest, and they will read ear. Notice the sheen on his neck. That's because I use a fair amount of water as I'm painting. Whether they're light values or dark values, my brush is always saturated with water. Makes for good water coloring. And now to render the top of his head and his hair. I absolutely love this part. I'm bringing in some of the background, very dark, underneath the light value, the white of the paper, of his chin. And you can see how that really prop pops out his prominent chinny chin chin. I'm almost done, and that can be a very dangerous place to be. It's very easy to overdo a watercolor, and it's very difficult to fix what you've overdone. So over the years, you have to really think about, okay, am I ready to stop, or, do I, or am I going to overdo it? It's always a challenge, but it's better to stop too early than too late. Now I'm thinking, okay, David, what do I do to finish this painting? And don't make it too much. Don't overwork it. Oh, so the decision is made. It's a done deal. Would you like to see more demonstrations like this? And some in color like this? Please, please, please hit that little subscribe button you see on my videos and you'll be kept abreast on more future painting demonstrations.